a Hope Springs Eternal. Like, somebody's gotta win? Why not me? I call it contest crack. It's one win and you're hooked. Each win feeds itself. Then you want more and more. The temptation is irresistible. Win a house, win a car, win a trip, win a million. We've all filled out a form, mailed in a ballot, or rolled up a rim. But for some Canadians, the lure of big prizes turns into a marathon dance with Lady Luck. They're called contesters. Loyal citizens of the land of big dreams, with long odds and slim chances. Lock up your trash bins, folks. Carolyn Willman needs bottle caps. Yeah, we got eight codes. Keep going. Mommy wants that big screen TV. She calls herself Canada's contest queen. But she's not above scavenging through the garbage in her Oshawa, Ontario neighborhood for that lucky bottle cap. Codes? No, just be careful because there's some wasps here. I would be driving in my car on recycling day and I could see in the boxes and people would have Coke and Pepsi with the lids. And I know there's a code on that lid. And I think to myself, that's a winning opportunity being thrown away. I see Pepsi cans, that's a good sign. Pepsi. Okay. Carolyn okay, got hooked you. on contesting when she was pregnant and unemployed. It wasn't code? long before her hobby started paying dividends. She won no, free vacations cycling. and celebrity Nothing meet and greets, rubbing shoulders with rock stars like Sting. She sat in Dumbledore's chair on the set of Harry Potter, but now the queen wants some riches. People say to me, well, show me what you've won. And I go, okay, here's the photo album. <laughs> it's not quite the same as saying, and come in and look at my car, and here's my new computer, and there's the big screen TV. My next big prize is gonna be something I can keep. You know, hold around and show off. Mike Smith of Toronto has plenty to show off. He's already won the car, the computer, and the TV. From vehicles to vacations, you name it, Mike's claimed it. His game plan is simple. Enter every contest a few thousand times. Even when he's driving, he's got his eye on the prize. This is for a nice 32-inch uh, widescreen, high-definition TV. Uh, you know, if you've got to wait two or three minutes, uh, you know, I can fill out a ballot in 20 seconds. So, I mean, two or three minutes, I mean, if I get six or seven, a, a full, full red light, I get six or seven uh, ballots made out. I mean, five, you know, five stoplights, I mean, it adds up. Mike already has a nice television. In fact, he's won seven of them. But he's still going to devote his entire weekend to dropping off more than 2,000 ballots in the hope of scoring number eight. Mike has a job at a copy center, a wife and three kids at home. But contesting has always come before family. In 30 years, he's won nearly a quarter of a million dollars in prizes and proudly recorded every victory in his scrapbook. My whole world's revolved around basically mailing in entries and contests. I'm prepared to spend 25 hours if it's a, a good prize or more. I've done that, you know, to 40 hours to win a car. And I mean, if they think I'm crazy, well, that's fine. Um. In Newmarket, Ontario, Rosemary Chu enters contests with the same dogged determination. After a lifetime of contesting, she's not the queen of contests. She's the Empress. I'm still lucky enough after all these years to win at least $1,000 every month. In my best year, I won in cash or merchandise about $44,000. For this mother of three, the mother load of contests is the local supermarket, with aisle after aisle of coupons and mail-ins. Today, Rosemary grabs two boxes of the same cereal, just what the sponsor was hoping for. I noticed there's this contest, but something else just caught my eye here. And I'm not sure which is the newer contest, so I'm picking up two boxes today just to see what the two contests are all about. Canadian companies spend $200 million a year on contests and promotions. For the casual player, the odds of winning are microscopic. Spend your money, you might as well get something for nothing. That's right. 
But contests aren't really about winning or losing. They're about selling. I think contests came from a simple idea that if we offer someone a prize for buying our product, maybe they'll buy more of our product. And now, here's a special out-of-this-world free offer. This moon rocket kit, both a toy and an exciting game. First, blast off. In the early days of radio and TV, even the crudest giveaways boosted sales. But it wasn't long before customers expected more than a Cracker Jack knick-knack. First it would be a dollar off, or a free box of detergent, and then it's like, wow, let's give them a minivan. Let's give them a minivan full of stuff. Let's give them a minivan full of stuff and send them to Disney World. New Country Cornflakes, New Country For 50 years, getting the consumer's attention came down to five words. He who shouts loudest wins. If you could outshout your competition on television, you won. Fast forward 50 years, we now have 3.3 million brands. There's consumers that are sitting down and watching TV and in their hands are remote, and the second commercials come on, they fast forward through it because they have the PVR. So we're now, as marketers, we're faced with saying, how are we going to find a way to get you to, to notice my brand? And contests are the way to do it. In 2007, two out of three brands used contests to boost sales. For contesters, it's a dream come true. Many of the pros believe the key to winning is to enter thousands of times. Carolyn Willman is certain that the key to victory isn't writer's cramp, it's learning how to seduce lady luck. To Carolyn, the flow of positive energy, what the Chinese call qi, can be as powerful as a thousand bottle caps. So I wanted to show you my office so you can give me some advice. Today, she's invited a couple of feng shui masters to make over her bedroom. This is the one room that I would really love to win a makeover for because we're still using college furniture. The mattress is very good, but there's no headboard, no footboard. If you're the queen, regal regal bedding, pull out all the stops. Even Oprah's been quoted to say, like, make your bedroom a sanctuary. Craig was a little bit skeptical when I started. I think most of the time from talking to the contesters, the spouse is always a little skeptical of the contester until the winds come in. Well, one thing you really want to try to do is keep the bathroom door closed, okay? And that'll stop the chief from going in. And if you don't like to keep your bathroom door closed, then what you want to do is you want to make sure you have a mirror opposite the door on the wall to push the chi back out. Because if you don't do that, one thing that's majorly going to happen, it's going to cause your wealth to go down the toilet. It's no surprise that Canada's most compulsive contesters like to pin down as much good luck as possible. In Calgary, retired teacher Fern Karaney is certain that she's learned the key to attracting good luck, an advantage gleaned from the latest craze in self-help books. An international phenomenon, The Secret, has sold close to four million copies. It preaches the law of attraction, the power of positive thinking. 52 years of being alive and many of them entering contests, I hadn't won anything except one priceless object, and that was a Chef Boyardee fanny pack. After reading The Secret, Fern put the fanny pack behind her and buckled down to some serious contesting. But she kept her growing obsession a closely guarded personal secret. And I think everybody secretly likes to win stuff. Um, it just gets a little odd when you, um, when you do 150 of them in the day. Mm-hmm. I have to shine it up. This was the very first thing I won in a Maxwell House contest. And when they called me and told me that I had won a $60 kettle, I was in heaven. 
And this, and we thought, well, how can a kettle be worth $60? But it can. And the kettle is just the beginning. Fern's certain that a big win is going to land in her mailbox. No. No. You have to deeply feel that you're worthy of winning all of these things. Then you're closer to the goal. Then the universe will make it happen. But to Jeff Rosenthal, the cosmos isn't so easy to control. He's a math professor at the University of Toronto. To him, the secret is, there is no secret. Somebody is going to get lucky. Somebody is going to win these things. Some of us are going to have more fortunate lives than others. But these magical forces based on people's you know, astrological signs or their past practices or whether they've been a good person and so on, there's just no basis for them. So far, it's been pretty even heads and tails. Although I did get uh, three tails in a row just a minute ago. There's two tails in a row again. So. To Jeff, contests are like coin tosses. They're all about probability, not positive energy or putting the toilet seat down. If you flip a coin lots and lots of times, then on average, the heads will cancel out the tails and you'll get about half heads and about half tails. You know, if I were superstitious, I might throw this coin into the pond for good luck, but I'm not. Most of us enter contests on a whim and a prayer. But for three decades, Rosemary Chu has built her existence and raised three sons on barcodes and ballots. I'm kind of amazed at some of the things that we did. I always think, how did we get through those hard times? But you do it because you find a way. You find a way, and contesting just happened to be one of the ways. Rosemary's goal, like all parents, was security for her children, a normal life of picnics in the park. When times were good, she entered contests as a hobby. But then came a separation, unemployment, and a descent so deep that she and her boys were living in the family van. I didn't want my kids to feel as badly as I was feeling. Just a few months prior, when I was still living with my husband, I mean, I was donating three, four hundred dollars worth of groceries for the food drives. And then here I am, you know, half a year later, having to go and ask for that, those donations back. That was hard. Those, those are nights when I cried myself to sleep. Rosemary Chu started entering sweepstakes with the determination of the destitute. But when she won $2,500 worth of groceries, she was too proud to tell the boys where the money came from. You know, ignorance is bliss, so I didn't know much about it. But now I understand now that like, she had to do it. She had to do what she had to do just for us to survive. So are you guys enjoying all the chicken and corn and all that, eh? Chicken's it's, good. it's nice when it's on uh, on somebody else's ticket. These were all from that Sobeys contest entered with the grocery. Today, company. the food, the basket, the bikes, even the soccer ball is a prize won by Mum. It's a literal free lunch. But now Rosemary's after contesting's biggest fish a new car for her oldest son, John. Like her contesting peers, she's won so many times that victory is almost expected. I'm calling in regards to the Stella Artois Film Festival Experience Contest, and you've been selected as a potential... Carolyn Wilmans just won two tickets to the Toronto Film Festival. She likes contests that require a little homework, believing that most Canadians won't go the extra mile. So that's the ad that I created for the Via Rail. It was a picture of a car stuck in the snow. And it says, stop going nowhere fast. Get up to speed with Via Rail. So I can, I can vote for myself. Ooh, so I'm in the top 12 according to this. Not bad. Local store contests are Mike Smith's specialty. Years of entering has made him an efficiency expert. When it comes to filling out ballots, Mike's pen travels as few inches as possible. Phone numbers, the brackets around the area code, the dash between the, between the phone number, you, you could eliminate that stuff. If I want to follow it out the way most people will, Mike Smith, my address, 
I go down here, sign up, I mean, 16 and a quarter inches. 14 and a half. I just shift my name closer to the telephone number. I don't have as far to write. I mean, if you're gonna fill out a thousand ballots, I mean, that translates into a, a lot of inches that I'm saving. But online, Mike is no faster than anyone else. The ease and speed of the web flattens the playing field and neutralizes the pros. On the internet, thousands of contests are just a click away. Cyber marketing has brought contesting into a new century and a new dimension. Personal, persuasive, and a lot slicker than a box top or a ballot. Hey man, what are you doing back here by yourself? Man, whatever, we gotta get inside this party. The line's already around the block. Let's go, man, we're gonna smash this party down. Pepsi's DJ contest lets you party like a rock star. All you have to give in return is access to your inner life. If you opt into my brand and you give me permission to talk to you and I find out what you like and dislike, I now have a chance to go back to you and say, would you be interested if I talk to you about some of the other things that we do? So contests are a phenomenal way to be the first entry point from you being in the mass world to you coming into my world. In Toronto, Tony Chapman works the selling side of the street. His marketing agency, Capital C, masterminds some of the slickest contest promotions in Canada. Can we uncover some unique insights about the consumer that will get the consumer thinking, feeling and behaving in the way we want them to behave? In 2007, Capital C dangled a prize that any red-blooded Canadian would die for. The perfect marriage of hope and hockey, passion and Pepsi. Imagine that Stanley Cup champion would ring your doorbell and bring the Stanley Cup into your home. So all of a sudden now there's a buzz factor. Man, wouldn't that be amazing? Messier coming over with the Stanley Cup. For the sponsor, Bring Home the Cup was cheaper and sexier than any mail-in coupon contest could ever be. Yeah! For the Pepsi drinking public, it was a call to action. Capital C asked Canadians to make a video proving their status as the nation's most fanatic fans. And you'd be amazed how far contesters will go given the right incentive. In the world of Canadian contesting, amateurs like these blushing brides and grooms-to-be far outnumber the pros. And that's just the way the sponsors want it. In today's world of contesting, the hardcore fanatics are being screened out, giving these contest virgins a chance to win the wedding of their dreams from Toronto radio station Mix 99. All these people seem to be, you know, pretty outgoing, which you'd hope they'd be, considering what they have to do to win. I mean, this isn't your fill in a ballot, drop in the box type of contest. The couple that triumphs in this wet and dry triathlon will win a $20,000 wedding. And the organizers are thankful the obsessives are nowhere to be seen. With these kinds of contests, uh, you don't tend to get the, the pro contest winners. My, my biggest experience as, as the on-air guy is they'll show up at, at events that I do and they'll come up to me and they'll go, hey, I won five cars last year and I won nine trips and from all these radio stations, thinking that that might impress you when really it's just the opposite. It was like, great, there's a whole bunch of opportunity for legitimate people to listen to our radio station passionately that didn't win because, because you did. Contesters and marketers are locked in a cycle of mutual mistrust. Sponsors don't want the average consumer to be frightened off by the successes of the hardcore pros. It's a part of the population that you don't want to ignore. Um, on the other hand, I think advertisers need to build mechanisms into their contests to prevent these people from winning every single time. Many contests now require a product code with every entry. It increases sales and decreases ballot stuffing. But the pros don't give up so easily. Look, the Code Fairy's been here. My husband Craig likes to go to the neighborhoods that have recycling the next day, and he will find me lots of codes. The Code Fairy's magic powers are nothing compared to RoboForm, a software program that, with the click of a single key, allows Calgary's Fern Karaney to submit hundreds of entries. But the sponsors fight back, banning RoboForm on many contest websites. It gets annoying. After a while, you can start to 
hate the actual company. Go, oh, that horrible contest again. It's a marketing dilemma. The sponsors want you hooked, but they don't want the pros winning all the prizes. The advertiser's answer? Instant wins. So a consumer can enter multiple, but they got to be thinking about it on an hourly basis. They got to be engaged with my brand on an hourly basis. They're just not stuffing one ballot box, hoping that they're going to stack the odds in their favor. Done that a few times. Mike Smith okay. doesn't like the new rules. He's won his cars and TVs the old fashioned way by entering thousands of times. If the contest is, enters as often as you want, then I don't see anything wrong with that. I mean, people you know, complain about you know, putting so many entries in, but everybody has the same opportunity. You know. Two pads, I took one, I was generous. Nah, I took a half a pad. <laughs> Mike obeys the rules to the letter, but he claims that some retail clerks haven't always played fair with him. <sighs> All right, next batch. Just get very angry when uh, store person is touching your ballots. They take them in the office and they've gone through them and said, oh, this person's got 70 or 80 ballots in here. And, you know, store personnel take, you know, ballots out and it's not a nice thing if it's, you know, enters as often as you want. Most sponsors would be delighted if the pros never won anything more than a cup of coffee. But some marketers concede that the buzz that follows the biggest winners can be contagious. They're helping, they're giving us exposure. If they win, they're talking about it and that's all good. Promotion agency revenues have grown 25% annually since 2005. Contests are sweeping the marketing world. Hi, Ed. Hello there. Oh. Carolyn Willman yearns to cash in on the contest explosion. Thanks, Ed. This is going to make a great prize for the convention. Thank you. Appreciate it. All righty. Ed is really generous. She's offering her secrets for sale to anyone who wants to win as often as she does. Today, Carolyn is stockpiling freebies to give away at her very own contester convention. At this event, she'll be walking on the selling side of the street. I do speeches, I do workshops, I sell Attracting Luck products on my website. And because I've got now 20 years marketing background, plus six years as a contester, I've got the pleasure of having sat on both sides of the table. The convention is a big gamble for a woman who prefers to have the odds in her favor. Out of my own pocket so far, $3,500. And then all my time, I've worked hours and days <laughs> on the convention for free. So blood, sweat, and tears. What is, I don't have a price tag for that. <laughs> to be crowned Canada's contest queen, Carolyn needs followers. So she's peddling autographed copies of her Wincyclopedia. Contest queen. We're going to turn you into a full-fledged contester. I don't know anybody that hasn't started this hobby that didn't win something. I've never thought of it to make it a hobby of like there's entering. Something. There's lots of us. There's conventions, there's clubs. What? Here, you have to think you're lucky before you're lucky. That's the secret. Ah. I am lucky. Those are the people that are fun because they get into it and when they start winning, they just can't believe that it's just that, as easy as it is. So I think I just made a contester. <laughs> Bring home the cup. Brought to you by Pepsi. The best contests are a perfect melding of sponsor desire and every man's dreams. Bring home that cup. Bring home the cup. But sometimes, to live the dream, you have to do more than fill out a ballot. Pepsi's Bring Home the Cup contest demands creativity and puts contesters in the spotlight. Consumers are so sophisticated. You have to make them the center of attention and you have to come up with an idea that they want, that they get immediately, they get excited about, and, and, and they're willing to participate in. Hey everybody, my name is Kevin D. The contest spurred amateur rappers, videographers, and whole towns into action. Everyone knew exactly which products to lay before the camera. Now, of course, we got our uh, little warm-ups here, you know, just to quench our thirst. We got our Pepsi, we got our Gatorade, and for our snacks, we got some Lay's potato chips. Sales went up, market share went up. Every which way you wanted to measure the promotion, from how people thought about it, felt about it, or actually behaved and bought the product, it was an overwhelming success. Who will the winner be? Are you ready? And the winner is... 
please take a bow. Greater Madawaska, Ontario, and Peter Calder. Pepsi's Bring Home the Cup merged national pride and product placement perfectly. What company wouldn't want to be responsible for making a dream like this come true? For professional contesters like Rosemary Chu, the greatest challenge is to maintain the strength to never stop entering. Rosemary has spent hundreds of hours trying to win a car for her son, John. He's become the man of the family, and um, he knows that I'm proud of him. I write him letters telling him how proud I am of him. John's old ride is on its last legs. So Rosemary has sent in 200 entries trying to win him a smart car. What do you think? Cute color. Yeah. <laughs> I like the color. 75,000 other Canadians are in the same contest. Crunch the numbers and the odds against the Chews are 300 to 1. But professional contesters rely on a different arithmetic, the algebra of confidence and hope. My mother has always made sure she's found a way. She's always showed us that, you know, no matter what, if you really want something, you can attain it. Often at the times when I most need or want something, usually when I most need something, um, I have these what I call my 11th hour contest wins where that thing that I need is something that I end up winning just when I need it, when I need it most. The biggest winners believe their optimism engenders their success. That's the spirit Carolyn Willman will be selling at her contester convention. It's already rubbed off on her husband, Craig. Empty some more of those turn ice bottles. <laughs> Not that anyone would notice. I was behind her 100%. I mean, who doesn't like to win? Carolyn converted Craig after winning him VIP treatment at the Molson Indy and a seat on the judges panel of a Florida beauty contest. But the prizes are just the perks. Carolyn's real dream is to sit on the throne of Contest Queen, Inc. I decided to turn my hobby into business when my daughter was two and a half and I was looking for something and I passed a church and on the service announcement board it said, you can't lose helping others win. And I thought, that is for me. If it, as long as it keeps breaking even, I think we're good. <laughs> Not all contesters share Carolyn's passion for publicity. Fern Carini of Calgary spent five months quietly entering hundreds of contests. A newbie to the game, she was too embarrassed to tell her own family. Came out at a dinner party. I didn't think they'd be so, they laughed. They just laughed. She's going to win mm -hmm. for us. Uh -huh. A Learjet. 50 hours. Well, you like the kettle. <laughs> <laughs> but the Chef Boyardee the fanny pack? No. More a teasing, like they would about your first boyfriend or something. How's your contests going? Yeah. And now, instead of going, fine, and being a bit defensive perhaps, now, Good. Everything's good. I didn't even know that there were these contests, really. No, I didn't know that it was a cult, kind of like. Oh, oh cult. <laughs> She's dabbling in the occult. I'm not dabbling in the occult, I'll have you know. <laughs> Winning for a living sometimes masks a darker truth for those who live to win. Mike Smith has been married to Andrea for 23 years. And for 23 years, she and her three children have been lost in the shadows of Mike's obsession. Before they were even born, we, they started. So when they were young, it was, Mike was really into it. Mike Smith tried to pass the thrill of getting something for nothing to his kids. He taught them to stuff the ballot boxes and enjoy the rewards. But Mike's compulsion turned his wife, Andrea, into a contest widow. Yeah, I guess our relationship basically is, you know, it could be a little better, but um, like I said, it's just, she doesn't mind going on those trips. <laughs> Mike has won a dozen vacations. For Andrea, it wasn't always a ticket to paradise. When we went to Spain, my daughter was only 21 months. 
I didn't want to leave them. I said, if I can't take my children, I'm not going anymore. I guess Mike liked winning the stuff, I don't know. Washer with a vacuum. If they never won, contesters would never play. Wow, and they are certain bonky. that if they never dreamed, they'd never okay, win. No, no, no. Five-year-old Nicole already is well-schooled in her mother's passion. Today, they're crafting a vision board of prizes that the universe is going to provide. I'd love to win a camera. Yeah, I know you would. Because I only have a pretend camera. I'm just cutting out the washer I want. I think I am teaching her how to have fun in life. I'm teaching her optimism. I'm teaching her positive thinking. I'm teaching her that anything is possible. Things that never, it, you can't predict a win, but if you put it out there. Nicole, she thinks this is what people do. People code hunt, we chase the male lady. She thinks <laughs> that's what people do. She doesn't understand that this is not your average household. I understand you're trying to get uh, in contact with me with regards to a uh, um, smart, <clears throat> smart car win. Oh, yes. yes. Against yes. all logic yes. but her own, yes. Rosemary Chu has won the smart car and kept her promise to her son. When she sets her mind to something, she definitely you know gets what she wants, and she's been pushing for a car for a while now. I just didn't think it would be so soon. We just were talking about it a few days ago, and then here we go, get a call saying that we want a smart car. Perfect. So, uh, how much? Uh, how soon after all the information's filled out, we'll be we'll be able to get the car? Today. Sorry. We can get it done for you today. Oh, it can be done today. Well, that yeah. sounds great. Yeah. Rosemary's chances of winning were three hundred to one, but with a lot of ballot stuffing and some divine intervention, even the longest odds can be overcome. I literally get on my knees next to my bed and kind of put my head down, and just say, you know, I'm I'm working a lot of hours. I'm trying my best. Um, but it would, you know, give me great pleasure to know that I could do this, you know, for my son. Please, you know, wh you know, whoever governs who wins and who doesn't, you know, uh, look benignly on me. Um, let me do this for my son. And, and then it happens. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Have a great day. Wow. Yeah. Did you think that was going to transpire so quickly? Like No, I thought it would take at least a couple yeah, weeks or a month. Yeah, like when I went in the Ford truck too. It was like four months and it seemed like forever before we received it. Mm. And this could be sitting in your driveway tomorrow at the earliest. I can't even believe it. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Mama. Mm. Proud of you. It's convention day for Carolyn Willman, the first big test of her marketing skills as she tries to make her compulsion her career. Her volunteers are ready, anointed by Carolyn's lucky oil. I feel lucky already. <laughs> yeah. How are you in? I'm gonna do it. I'm in <laughs> Well, what happened for you? Carolyn admits she's been her own biggest promoter north and south of the border. When I was at the U.S. convention, I handed out registration forms <laughs> and said, are you addicted to these conventions? You come out to Canada if you can't wait till the 2008 national, U.S. national. Come on up. My prize might be here today. I won $1,000 in a Wonder Bread contest. I don't like Wonder Bread. With her first big win under her belt, Fern Carini is happy to be out of the closet. Mm-hmm. Always an exciting day. No. no, this is the biggest prize I've ever won. And it somehow legitimized a lot of my contest entering. $1,000 is nothing to sneeze at. I want to win trips and washers and dryers. And yes, I have a lot more things that the universe is preparing to send to me. Mm-hmm but mainly trips. In Toronto, Carolyn's convention has attracted 125 disciples from across Canada and the United States. But the would-be contest queen had hoped for a lot more. Maybe my expectations were too high. I'm a dreamer, what can I say? 
you know, shoot for the stars at the moon. Still, it's the largest gathering of contesters in Canadian history. And Mike Smith has been invited to tell the crowd how he wins, and wins, and wins. It's a chance for him to revel in his obsession. This is my first convention. I said I didn't know they existed, and I'm having a blast. I'm in the asylum with the rest of the uh, folks. <laughs> I'm Bonnie, and we're co-chairs of the contesting group called the Tijuana Winners. And if you say it fast, it sounds really hot. And we meet once a month, and we share our love of contesting with each other. This has just been so much fun, because it's okay to love contesting here. <laughs> our next speaker this morning is Mike Smith. Mike won four cars, 12 vacations, thousands of dollars in gift certificates, all told since 1988. And Mike figures he's around a quarter of a million dollars. I believe uh, we have a room full of wild and crazy contesters. In front of this crowd, Mike's on top of his game. I hope everybody can read this. I don't have the time. <laughs> and my response to that is, yes, you do. <laughs> and I can prove it. If, if you get a ticket, you have to go to court. I don't care if the judge is there. I'm going to sit there. You know, before, when it's my turn to go up and say I'm not guilty, I can fill out 200 ballots. So that's, you know. You know. I'd like to play fair, and I mean, if I go in, I'll take half the pad. I mean, I'm going to leave half. I, mean, <laughs> I could be nasty and take the whole thing, but there's still pad. Okay, I only took one. <laughs> Anyhow, so if you're going in the store... In this room, store, Mike's a rock star. The Tony the Robbins of the ballot Saturday, stuffers. They don't want his autograph, just the Ten Commandments of contesting. Just, you know, if, one is, uh, always read the fine say. print. It's a lesson that Rosemary and John Chu are learning the hard way. Their free car comes with some expensive strings attached. I promised you I would win you a car or get you a new vehicle because you're kind of coming up in the world in your profession and so on. And I wanted to reward you somehow. Um, quite honestly, son, I, I would love to help you, but financially I can't do that and I don't know if you can afford 6,000 plus a year. Wow. Initially when we got the call, I was under the impression we'd won the vehicle and then the secondary call uh, informed us that no, indeed it was a three-year lease. Obviously this is going to be your call because this is going to affect your next th three years. What, what are your thoughts? Um, we'd like to talk about the insurance. That's probably the biggest thing. Extra John's realizing insurance. he can't afford to keep his prize insurance. and because and it's a lease, he can't so sell it. Uh, He's going to have to give up the car. That, that does pose as an issue. It came as quite a shock because um, I'm going to school and whatnot, so yeah, a little bit upsetting finding that out. But for a hardcore contester, defeat is just another incentive to dream. I'm just going to go back again tonight and um, check on my browser, find more car contests, and just keep on entering because I have no doubt that eventually I'll win one and hopefully sooner than later. We have to thank Carolyn Willman for having the vision to bring this concept to Canada. Where is Carolyn? Back at the convention, it's a moment of triumph for the woman who put it all together. You, Carolyn's shifting gears. From bottle cap scavenger to savvy promoter with loot of her own to give away. My job is to teach people how more fun. I can't think of anything more fun than winning. I'm not going to quit until I win something substantial. When I win one, I say, I want another one. And it's just, that's the rush, I guess. There's still that frisson of, of excitement, you know, when you open that declaration envelope and you find out you've won. For Canada's hardcore contesters, each new day brings another chance to marshal hope, luck, and pride in the game of a lifetime. The game that never ends. Wants the play. The grand prize winner is Carol Bellow. 
Until you actually see somebody win live and their face and their expression and how they feel inside, it, you can't, it, it's, it's indescribable. Oh my God! Congratulations! When that big one hits, that's why we all enter.